Hey YouTube, what is up? Brian Fanafan17 here, and today I decided it would be a good day to do a full tour of the house and also have it be a switches video as well, do the switches in my new house. And even though not everything is still not done, there's still stuff that has to be done left, I figured that mostly enough is done at this point that I feel like it's okay to do a tour. Unfortunately, there's still no fan on the porch yet, but I'll kind of show you where that's going to be, and then I'll do a quick video once they do finally get around to putting that there. But um, for now, I don't want to spend too long outside because it's really hot. But you can see this is the outside of the house from the front right here. We'll go over here to our porch. Um, it's fairly simple right now, but eventually we're gonna put like kind of flowers and stuff in the little flower boxes, kind of like they have it over there. Um, and we're debating whether or not we wanna get this stained, the wood stained or not. And But these steps is clearly marked you can see they're only temporary, so I think they're going to have to put in new steps eventually. And also, there seems to be covered. I mean, I'm not sure. Like, some, like, staining it is, like, extra and stuff. And I don't know if that's extra, too, or that's just something they have to put there. So there's a little bit of work that kind of needs to be done here, but it's not too bad. And see, we already have a couple chairs out here, and it's a fairly nice porch. And then there's gonna be a fan, a white Zonix right there. I, as I mentioned before, they need to put that there. Now, before I go in, I'll actually show you. So this house right here and this house are essentially the same model. They're the exact same model of house, but their layouts, they're just mirror images from each other like you can see the dining rooms on that side here while it's on the right side there and you can see on their porch actually well I don't want to go through their yard I'll go through mine Maybe it's a little weird to film a neighbor's house but you can see they actually have a Minka Air simple on their porch right there and you can see exactly how it's installed that's exactly how they're supposed to do it here and why they didn't do that while they were building the house i'm a little confused but they'll need to do that eventually so it'll be just like that except it will be a white zonix and not a mink air simple and then on this neighbor's i'll even show you this other neighbor's house which you can um I always get a view of from my dining room and kitchen here. You can see they have two hunters. I keep forgetting the model name. It's like something Bay or something. I think they're sold at Menards. You can see there's two of them right there. And then these two neighbors have fans on their porches as well. They have a fanimation. Um... What, uh, Edgewood, I think it is? Oh, it's not really picking up on camera, but it's in their screen and porch. They have a white Fanimation Edgewood in there. So those are some of the fans installed outside at our neighbor's houses. And not all houses you have to have a fan installed on the porch. It's an option, but um, you can see they all have fans on their porches and stuff. So that's exactly what we're supposed to have here. Um... But anyways, here we are. There's an outlet right there, so that's kind of nice. Here's a Google Nest doorbell. And we'll head on inside. And... All right, so we're gonna start, now we'll officially start with the switches here. So we got three switches right when you come in the entrance. And as you guys might be able to guess, there's probably gonna to have to redo this and add a fourth switch here um, because obviously there needs to be something and which means we might have to move this picture 
um, they're going to have to probably put a fourth switch here, something that will control the fan that's going to be there. Um, maybe they'll put it on this side, I don't know, but my guess is they're probably going to do it over here where these other ones are. So with Okay, the sorry, I accidentally cut off the video there. Um, but anyways, um, this first switch right here is one of the two switches that controls four pot lights in the kitchen there. The pot lights in this house are extremely bright, much brighter than they were at my old house. So that's taken a little bit of getting used to. They're just, they're all just so bright. But, um, I mean, they're also very nice too, so. But yeah, that's what well, those are. Those are what all the pot lights in our house look like. Um, I'll show a close up of one of them when we go over there. This next switch does this pendant right here. This is a pretty cheap, basic pendant, but it looks fairly nice, and I like the finish of it. This, the brass, the same brass that a lot of the fanimations are in and a lot of the other lighting in our house is in it. Got, I think it got a little dented during shipping, but it's not huge. And it, it was kind of dented when it first arrived, but it's sort of, we were able to kind of smooth it out a little bit, so that's good. And then this switch right here at the very end does the porch light right there. All right, so here we go to the kitchen, living here is a nice little tour of the kitchen. All Bosch appliances. Here's a light that's... Um, And then right here is the other switch that does the kitchen pot lights. So those are the only two switches that do the kitchen pot lights. Um, but then over here by the sink, the first switch and surprisingly the only switch right here, it's the only switch that controls these two pendants right here. I'm a little surprised they would put it here I feel like there's better places they could have put that or at least put like maybe have it be over here with the other one because these are to go all the way over to the sink just to turn lights on. These are like over the island and they're kind of like main lights, you know, so it's like like for the whole kitchen. So it's like I feel like they kind of should be controlled near where the pot lights are controlled from. But, you know, it, it's not too bad. I mean, it's fine. That's just how they do it. And then this, we'll just turn on for a brief second, is the disposer. And then this is just a, um empty place where you could put a switch. I'm going to assume that is for if you ever decide to install under cabinet lighting, which we have not really needed. So I, my guess is that's just going to stay a blank switch for, or like a switch slot, basically where you could put a switch um, for quite a while. Um, you can see, uh, and then here you can even see out the kitchen window, you can see um, the neighbor's fan. And then I, back when we were first looking at houses in this neighborhood, this was the house that people were, a lot of the, um, the, uh, they were showing people who were interested in the neighborhood because it wasn't quite done yet. So when I went in it, I got to see the inside of it. And upstairs, they have two um, fans that I thought were Harbor Breeze Cedar Shoals. I remembered them being Harbor Breeze Cedar Shoals, but then I recently actually found some pictures of this place from back when it was still kind of being built online just last night. And that's, and now that I look, there was a picture inside one of the bedrooms, and I don't think that those are the fans they have. That they seem to be different. Like, they looked similar to Cedar Schultz, but that's not what they were. So, um, but yes, they have basically two fans up in the two upstairs bedrooms, and those are the only fans in the whole house. It's just two in the upstairs bedrooms there, and two on the front porch. 
So anyways, I should mention that this, the model, the models of this um, neighborhood have names, and this one is called a Madison. There's model names like Ellis, there's a Betty, there's Plum Rose, there's even one called the Hunter, interestingly. Um, but this one is a Madison, and um, actually that one is a Spruce over there. That one is called a Spruce. This one is a Madison, and the one over there is a Madison as well, just in mirror image. So um, anyways, here in the living room, we got two switches right here. We This is the only switch. Again, I probably would have put at least a couple switches for these lights, but it's the only one. There's four pot lights here. And here's a close-up of the pot light, what all the pot lights look like in our house. Like I said, I would do... And then here's the wall control for the fan. But it's been a little bit funky lately, this wall control. It's like, it sort of was behaving weird and stuff. And it was like, but then I was able to get it to like high speed. And then the remote for the fan worked fine. It was kind of a long story. But the fan wasn't really working right when I was controlling it from this. Um... But yes, this is basically, but normally I think there would just be one switch here because as I mentioned in the original quick tour video of this house, the, the Madisons, they do not come with ceiling fans in the living room. There is just normally nothing here, just the four pot lights, which is a bit surprising. It was extra to have a box for a seating fan in here, but it was well worth it because this looks really cool in here. I, I really like the Spitfire. Um, you can see that it is. It's kind of running, just running on low speed there. I'll show you the remote for it. I got I didn't show the remotes for the fans in the original tour, so here's the remote for it right there. It's just a regular three-speed fan. I thought Spitfires were fan sync compatible and had like many speeds, but I guess I'm wrong. Or maybe there's some other kind of long story about that. And then, oh, I almost forgot. This is easy to forget about this switch over here. This switch does the fireplace, which was recently installed. It was actually just installed while I was at camp, back when I made the video here a month ago. Um, before we moved in, they had not finished a slight putting, setting up the fireplace. see a flame there. It's taking a while to start up. It's... Huh, I hope it's all right. Oh, here we... Okay, it beeped again. There we go. Okay. And you can see there's this... It's a little dark. I wonder if the screen light comes off or something, because you can't really see it very well. Um, but it's a very nice fireplace, and it's definitely different from our last house, which had all gas fireplaces. And it beeps to let you know when it's turning off and turning on. But yep, that's it right there. And they do have to, I think they have to put drywall at the bottom there so you don't see that there. But other than that, I think it's mostly done and assembled. So, yep, so it's an electric fireplace. I mean, maybe it's partly gas, I'm not sure, but it definitely has... Since you can turn it on and off with the switch, it's definitely at least somewhat electric. Okay, so here we all are in the hallway going to my bedroom and then to the back of the house. So, um, how should I do this? So there's two switches right here, and I guess this would be a good time to explain the way they did the wiring in this house is a little odd and counterintuitive. So, um... Instead of having the switch closest to the light, like the switch that's closest to the light work for that light, it's it's like the opposite. I, I guess I should just show you instead of just try to explain it. This switch does the lights furthest away, while this switch does the lights here. And it's like that with, if there's any case where there's, where it's like this, that's how they have it set up. So it's really weird. And I guess it kind of makes sense because the switch closest to you, like if you're walking upstairs, 
you, the switch closest to you is the lights that you probably want on if it's nighttime actually. And then if I was walking down here, I want these lights on because I'm about to go over this way. So you do the switch that's closest to you, but it's very counterintuitive. So it's a little confusing. So anyways, as I just mentioned, this switch right here is one of the three switches that does these three pot lights right here. room. Here is two out of the three switches that does it. So we have another switch that controls them right here, right next to my bedroom here. And then I guess I should just show you the third switch since we're out here. Again, two, here's another example. Two switches, but the light that's, um, well, yeah, yeah, no. See, so like the light that's closest you I mean you think it'd be this one but it's actually this one that does these two pot lights but then this one that's a third switch that does these three so it's weird that these two switches are so close together and they do the same light and then this is the third one so those are all three but anyways and uh, yeah, that's for something else. We'll go to that later. But anyways, we're going to head on into my bedroom here. And, um, oh, come on, focus. You can see, sorry about that. I know that doesn't look good at all, but that's because we're still waiting on blinds are actually coming in, I think, just a few days. But I, the sun is so bright in this room in the morning because... The windows are so big that it's nice to have things to kind of cover it up so the light doesn't come in here as aggressively in the morning. So we got posters and paintings to cover up the windows so it's not too bright in here until the blinds come. But anyways, we'll go in here. We got a series of four whole switches right here. And interestingly, I only really use two of them. And that being the first and last one. So this switch right here does this one single pot light coming into the entrance here. Actually, I don't use this light too often. But um, it's kind of cool, though, to have like a little pot light like right in the entrance here of the room. As I've mentioned before, this is actually traditionally supposed to be the master bedroom. But because it's so small, I decided to make it my room. And there's an option to extend the master. And really, that's the extended master for a Madison is really more like a true master bedroom. While this is more like the size of a pretty small bedroom or even an office. And I'll actually go outside because there's two, there's two Madisons I can show you, one with an extended master and one with not. So I'll show you what I kind of mean in a second. But when we got this, the foundation was already here and they already had it poured, so it was not an extended master. So this is what we ended up with. But honestly, I really love this room. I feel like it's the perfect size for me and I get my own adjacent bathroom because, as I mentioned, this is supposed to be the master. All right, so I might have to um, kind of do a little setup here, but one of these switches, I think it's this one, does one outlet in here, and I'm going, I, well, I haven't actually 100% proven this theory yet. I haven't had a chance, and I'm about to. I'm assuming it's this one right here because it's the only outlet in here that is installed upside down. While the other ones are installed right way up, this one is installed upside down and there's one outlet in both the other bedrooms that's like that as well. So I'm assuming they did that intentionally so people know which one is controlled by the switch, but I need to 100% prove that theory before I can say for sure, and I also need to prove that it's this switch. Now, this switch, I assume, will forever do nothing because my guess it is, is it is for a wire in the electrical box for this fan. If you had a regular pole chain fan, you could wire the fan and light separately, and then this would do the light for it, and this would do the fan. However, because this is a Fanimation remote controlled fan, and they actually still have to put in a wall control in this spot right here, um, that 
they it, you can only do one switch for it. So they made they chose this one obviously and made this one vacant. So then therefore this one does the sculpt there. See it turned it off there. I really love this fan by the way. Turn it back on and I'll show you the remote for it over here. This video, this video might be long, but that's okay. It's a new house, so I figure it deserves a well, a good tour, a good long tour. So here's the remote for it, exactly identical to the Spitfire remote. And again, it's a three-speed fan. It doesn't seem to be fan sync compatible, and it does not seem to have many speeds or functions. And in that I'm a little disappointed about. It would be really cool if the fan in my own room had like was fan sync compatible and had all these cool functions and not just a regular three speed fan but it looks so cool that i don't really mind that disappointment so there's my keyboard tv oh they even put an outlet on the wall here which i like kind of higher okay obviously that was a really dumb way to word it because all outlets are on the wall I mean, I guess they could be on the ceiling, but um, I mean higher on the wall. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so anyways, here we are in my bathroom. Um, and we got a series of three switches right here. This one does the lights over the sink. Okay, my camera is not focusing. Please focus. There we go. Now these lights, I mentioned it was a long story in the old tour, I mentioned I knew that these were the kind of lights we'd be having in our house, but it was a long story. But now that we're in the full tour, I'll explain it to you now. So um, there is another Madison across the street from that green one. Um, and I was actually, as, as I was mentioning earlier, that one has an extended master, but that's not the point. The point is that when we were considering this neighborhood, that was another one that was just being finished up at the time. We went inside it and that owner had picked this lighting. Now, of course, they had it installed differently. They, the ones over the sink were installed facing down instead of facing up. I'm not sure why that is because I think this looks cooler facing up like this. But we loved them so much that we decided to basically, quote unquote, steal their lighting choice. And um, that's how we ended up with these. So that's how I knew that this was the kind of lighting that we'd have. And this is basically when I went, when I got out the Fanimation catalog, I basically made all the fan choices with this lighting in mind. And I think the fans go very well with that lighting. So yep, these are two sconces over the sink, both on that first switch. This is a basic, it's actually a new tone fan, interestingly, just like in my old house. My old, my old house had a much cooler exhaust fan. I mean, it was neon, so this is just basic, but that's okay. Um, that does the light for it. And the third switch here does the fan. Now, there is also an option for Madison's to have a pot light over the shower. And I'm sure there would have been a fourth switch here, and that switch would have done the pot light that was over the shower. Now, about half the Madison's chose it and half of them didn't. And all I have to say is that I was not here when that decision was made and my mom thought we did not need a pot light over the shower. And actually, to be honest with you, we probably really don't. I might have said yes, because I think a pot light over the shower would be pretty cool in some ways, but it's so small in here. There's so much light from this window that you don't even need any lights in here if you were to take a shower now. And then at nighttime, these lights are so bright that and then if you put this one on too it's like um let me turn that and even this pr provides enough light too that you don't really need a pot another really bright pot light over the shower but so i don't really mind that much but i might have said yes just because it might have been kind of cool but i figured i should mention that here in the closet there's the zonix that still needs to be installed um, the box where I've shown that already. And then here, there's a switch that's actually pretty low. And I saw this when they were building the house and the walls were still open, that because these switches are back-to-back, um, -back, they couldn't, there wasn't room to have them at the same level. So 
I might have just put the switch on this side, but instead they just decided to put it below where these switches are on the other side, and that's how that switch ended up so low to the ground. But it controls that LED light right there. Just a simple LED light in the closet. It's actually not very good quality. It buzzes. But um, it's a closet light, so who really cares, right? Now, here we are. I already showed this earlier, but this, this switch does those. And then this is one of the two switches that does these two pot lights right here. And then the other switch that does those two pot lights is this one right there. And this is basically the mudroom. This is the hallway from the garage coming into the house. And um, so here's the laundry room. Actually, let's start with the half bathroom. So here we are on the half bathroom. And again, there's a series of three switches. This one just does the single vanity light, exactly like the one in my bathroom, but it's just one. There I am. There's a sink, mirror, toilet, very small half bathroom. Um, by the way, I should mention this tile is temporary. I don't know if I mentioned that in the original tour or not, but this is not going to be stained. They, the original tile, it's like a marble tile, was back ordered, so we had to um, wait, and they had to put this down temporarily because it wasn't going to be here for a while. It's here now, and it's in the garage, but now we're just waiting on the guy to come and install it. So, the middle light here does that light. It's again, it's the exact same new tone exhaust fan that's in my bathroom as in here. And this one does the fan. And then in the laundry room, very simple. This is a lot, a light, so not a lot, light of the same model as the, um, as these. It's the exact same model and it's basically just a same finish to just basically a flush mount ceiling version of that same light. And it's just control on this one single switch right here. And see there's a, <laughs> there's a direct view of our laundry room into their laundry room. Here's a direct view. This is, I get, this is probably not the most fun to look at, but honestly, we don't spend a lot of time in these rooms, so we don't really mind. And there'll be sheer kind of blinds here when they put in all the blinds for this house. That will be there. Okay, so now let's head outside, or to the garage at least. And, um... Here's the garage. Here's where we park, and then here is some stuff that we still need to sort out, and then mo it's also just all the fans I am basically going to be selling at this group trip. I put them all out here to separate them from the ones I'm keeping. Um, so you can see here is a, um, so I showed this one, this does the, those. This switch in the middle does these two lights right here very basic lights. And in this one, I'm not entirely sure what it does. There's two attics above the garage, and I saw that when they were building the house that there was another light just like this, but installed um, sideways. Um, why is this not focusing? Oh my gosh. Okay, there was like a light installed sideways, um, kind of up. It was in one of these two eggs. I think it was this one and that. I'm going to guess that that's what this switch controls. But obviously I can't really tell or find out for sure. These lights obviously just work when you open the garage. So right here, the store is all locked. Um, yeah, you can see it without opening the door. You can see there is a um, light right there. And you can see that is what this switch does right there. Just that light on the side. I'll just, I'll show it when we go out here, like from the front. Now I just want to make sure this switch right here doesn't control the outside garage door lights. No, it doesn't. 
I didn't think it did. So the, the garage door lights, we do not get any control of when those are on. Those come on when the neighbors come on. All the neighbors' garage lights come on at the same time at night. So these ones are basically on all night long with like their garage lights and their garage lights. And you can see right here, we got a house that's currently under construction. Back, even back when we first moved in here, actually up until the point of till just like last week, it was just a foundation. And it, it had also been a foundation when we came to look at this house. So it was basically two empty foundations. We built ours and then just after we moved in, they started building this one. So I'm glad that they finally, this one was empty for so long. I'm glad that they finally started building it. This one is, um, this one is the model Ellis. Um, so it's different from ours, but, um, let's see. Now this yellow house right here, this one is a, uh, what's it, a plum rose. They actually have a white Fanimation cute installed on their porch. I wasn't sure that those were outdoor rated. I hope they are because otherwise that's not going to be good. But here's the house that we stole the lighting from right here. This is our neighbor's house. And here we go. So you see, this is the master bedroom for this house and it's not extended. So it's just like mine um, at, at this, this one here at my house. Um, here is an extended master. So this one is not actually mirror image from ours. This one is exactly like ours, but it has an extended master. And then because of the extended master, there's more room in the basement too with like the foundation and stuff. So they have a whole nother bedroom and bathroom down there. So it's actually a four bedroom house. So technically it's bigger because there's a whole nother extra bedroom and bathroom down there. But, um, but yes, other than that, it's exactly like ours. And they actually have, I went inside it too, and it has three Minka Air Concept Ones in white. One in each of the three bedrooms, but they do not have a fan on their porch. And I don't think they ever will. But yes, that is the difference between an extended master and a non-extended master on the Madison. Okay, this tour is already becoming insanely long and we haven't even gone up to the second floor yet. Okay, so we'll go up to the second floor now. And as you can see, there's a nice skylight right there. Here is the switch. I already showed this, but show it again. Just as a refresher, this switch furthest from these does um, two sconces. This sconce right here and this sconce up there. That is actually one of three switches that controls those sconces. Um, here we go. This is the second one. And this is the third one. Again, these two switches are pretty close to each other, but you know, I guess that's just how maybe one so when you come out of each bedroom. That's probably why they set it up like that. And then this one switches, this one single switch right here. Does the chandelier. And you can see they're the and again, they're the same company that does the bathroom lighting and that one laundry room light. But it's just they're single sconces, and then this is a chandelier version. Now, people have suggested that there should be a ceiling here. And I honestly think that maybe someday that would be possible because I think it would be really cool to have a ceiling fan where this chandelier is right here. And last night when I was looking through pictures of other houses in this neighborhood, there was a house. It wasn't a Madison, but the up a lot of the upstairs areas for these houses are laid out very similarly like this where there's a landing area and then a bedroom on each side. And they actually had a white Fanimation air decor installed in this place. That was pretty cool. Actually, they did in both the bedrooms as well. But the Fanimation air decors in both the bedrooms had bowl lights, while the one out here just had nothing, no light on it. So, 
But yeah, so someone actually has thought of putting a ceiling fan right here. I'm apparently not the first one. So that's pretty cool. We'll actually go into the upstairs bathroom before we check out the bedrooms. Um, so very similar setup to the other two bathrooms, basically, where there's a switch right here that does these two lights right here. Again, exact same lights that are in my bathroom. Here's the bathroom fan, which is installed all the way up here. There, as you can see, you can see the new tone logo on it right there. Middle switch does the light for it. This switch does the fan. Now the builder made some very good mod. Okay, so this is a big thing we're still waiting on. They've been having problems um, getting windows to show up to these houses. So we're basically waiting on a whole window to be installed here, which is kind of annoying, but I mean, you know, it's not like horrible and, and it's, it's sealed up pretty well. So water doesn't get in or anything, but hopefully they put that there soon because that's a little annoying and it doesn't look very good. But you can see um, the original layout of the Madison does not have a high ceiling in the second bathroom. It's just a regular low ceiling. And the builder thought because the rest of the upstairs, the guy who like was building this house decided to make some modifications. And that's one of the modifications he made is to raise the ceiling so it's, it's just the same height as the rest of the ceiling up here. Cause it's like, why not, you know? It's like, why not have this be a nice high cathedral ceiling as well? So that was one of the modifications he made, which was really cool. Um, so we'll go into the secondary bedroom, which actually already now has just yesterday, the sleeper sofa, right? This is a sofa, sofa that can also be pulled out into a bedroom. So this is like my mom's office slash the guest bedroom. So when we have guests come over, they're basically going to be um, staying in here. And I'm actually, there's actually going to be at the group trip a fan collector. A certain fan collector is actually coming here to stay the night for a while. And that is none other than Alex the Fan Man. So he's actually going to be here in I think actually precisely two weeks. And he's, I think he might be the first fan collector to see this house which is really exciting. So his mom and maybe him too will be um, probably using this room. So that's an example of how this room is, um, will be used. So you can see we got three switches here. Um, we got this switch right here, this complex wall control, obviously, I think that's pretty obvious that's for the cute or coot. I still don't know how to say the model name. Um, and then here's the remote for it, which basically looks basically exactly the same as the wall control does. Um, this camera does not want to focus today. Now this one, obviously you can see there's much more complex features on here. Like it has mini speeds. It is fan sync compatible, but it, I don't know if the electricians actually installed fan sync. So they might have to come back and we might have to figure out how to get fan sync set up with these fans. But at least they work like regularly with the remote and the wall control right now. So that's pretty good. So here is obviously this is one out of two cutes. There's two cutes. There's one in the other bedroom as well. Um, and I really like these as well. These are also really cool. Um... And see, just yesterday, we also got um, solar-powered shades for these blinds. So this is a remote for them. I'll even demo it for you. While that's taking its time on closing, we'll go into the closet here. So you see there's a switch outside that controls an LED light that's wall-mounted right here. Again, it's cheap, it buzzes, but again, it's a closet light, so who really cares? So these work really well. They basically block all light for coming in the... Oops, I think it got a little messed up there, but that's okay. They're, mo they're supposed to kind of basically block out all light from coming in the... Uh, the uh, skylights. So, like, if you're sleeping in here, 
you don't want it, the sun to like wake you up. And so, so these work really nice and they just got installed yesterday. And there's one for the other bedroom too, but obviously there's not one here because you don't really need one in here. You can always have light coming in this room. All right, so here's the other bedroom. There's the other cute. Um, it's basically the exact same bedroom except kind of just on the other side, but it does have wood floors because my mom, my mom actually wanted wood floors in her bedroom. This is the bedroom she ended up taking, so that's why this room has wood floors while the other one is carpet. It normally comes with carpet as well, but um, anyways, man, this video has been going on for so long. So here is the um, control for the one in here. Okay, I think my camera's having problems focusing, so I'm going to stop the video here and come back when I figure this out. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's better. This switch right here. Oh, actually, I guess I didn't, I guess I didn't finish up the switches on the wall in here, did I? So, so both bedrooms, I should actually say, are set up the same way. This, again, is just like my bedroom. I don't think it does anything because it would normally be for if a fan had just a regular light pull chain set up um, that you could use both switches. One would do the light and one would do the fan, but that's obviously not the case here. So this switch will be vacant. And this switch, you can see here's the upside down plug in there. So this switch, I believe, controls that. And then it's basically just the same setup in here. This switch would normally do fan and light. Like, well, like, like the, the these two, there'd be two switches here and they do fan, light, sort of wiring. So they, they, they these basically go to vacant wires in the fan boxes. And then this one, oh, actually we can test the theory here. Wait, actually, maybe I was wrong. Well, maybe it's the top one, hold on. He has our air cleaner set up here, so. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's the top, it just does the top one. So basically each room just has one single outlet that lets you Okay, yeah, so it's just, the ones that are installed upside down, it's just the top one. So, yeah, we'll turn it off and this will turn off. Yes, yeah, so it's just the top one. Okay, so I'm glad we figured that out. I thought it might be both. Yeah, we don't need to turn that back on. Um, but yeah, and then same closet set up here. Um, you got a wall mount, another wall mounted LED light here. And again, it buzzes, but it's just a closet light. And your ultra, we don't need these on right now. Um, so yeah, basically, oh, and I guess I haven't showed the remote for this one yet. Here's the remote for it. And then here's the remote for the um, one in here. So yeah, and then there's a closet here, but there's no lights in it. It just... Another thing that the builder did was make the closet smaller so these bedrooms were bigger. The original Madison layout has the wall go up to there. So like this whole area is a closet. And honestly, this is much better because it makes the room bigger. And that would be a humongous closet for an upstairs bedroom just to have it be all the way to where the ceiling stops slanting there and, and see the um, exact same thing here. Um, it would go to there. And we even saw a, um, a layout of another Madison in this neighborhood that had the original design and it doesn't look as good. I'm glad the builder made that modification. There's actually another modification he made too that I didn't mention when I was down here. So basically this whole area, the dining room right here, 
uh, the Madison, the original Madison, and I think a lot of other neighbor houses in this neighborhood that have a similar kind of porch dining room layout set up like this. The dining room ceiling is not vaulted. It, it kind of comes, starts like about here, and it's just a very low, flat ceiling up to here. And then this is all the same. And that's how both the green Madison and the gray Madison across the street there that I was showing you guys are like that. But the builder decided to just have this be an open slanted ceiling, which in my opinion looks much cooler because we were actually worried about getting a chandelier for such a low ceiling back when we saw the other two Madisons because it was like that ceiling was going to be so low. So we, I even thought about maybe we should just get a, a fancy flush mount light because it's such a low ceiling, but they ended up vaulting it and making it much higher so we could put kind of the sort of a chandelier. It's kind of more just a fancy pendant, but it's a big pendant, so, you know. And then there are these two lights here. We were a little worried when these lights were first installed, we were a little worried because they don't really, we thought they would actually be the same finish as that, believe it or not, because in the advertising, they have it advertised as antique brass. If you look at it closely here, you can sort of see the antique brass, but it, it's like, it's almost false advertising in my opinion, because this looks more brown to me. But now that they've been up for a while, the contrast against kind of all the, the brass hardware and the other brass fixtures in here is actually kind of cool. So if, if they can kind of just pass for being very dark bronze or maybe even black. So it's like, that's cool, but it's still kind of, there's a little bit of false advertising, but the shades on these are so cool. Now these are high quality. These were expensive. Um, these are not cheap like the one down there. All right, so now to go to the basement. I know I'm so sorry this tour has gone on so long, but there's so much to say. Um, Here's a switch right here. This is one of the two switches that just does the single pot light headed downstairs into the basement area. It's the landing here. Go into the basement. And then again, it's the whole counterintuitive setup here where the one furthest is the other switch that does that light. And then this one, that switch right here, does eight pot lights in here. Man, my camera is just not having a good focusing day. It's basically, there's a total of um, 12 pot lights in here. There's four more over there. Um, but there's four kind of on a, a lower section of the ceiling. I think this is like this because there's like a vent, some kind of AC duct worker vent running through there. So they had to drop it in that one section. And then there's four lights over here. This is, they still have to patch that up, ignore that. But, um, yep, yeah, it's, and, and they're just basically controlled on that. This, this is the only switch that controls them. I personally might have put another switch somewhere over there just because this is such a big room and you might want another place to control those lights. But that's how they have it set up. And then there's one single switch over here that does, you probably guessed it, these four pot lights here over in what we've decided to make the movie an entertainment room. It's sort of a whole nook over here of like, there's a couch and a TV and stuff. Here's my piano, which I absolutely love. It's electric, but it's so amazing. I'll just, I guess I can just show this lamp here. This is actually a vintage um, lamp that was sort of repurposed. It's from the eighties, but it was spray painted and has a new shade. Um, this came from the old house, though. We had this one at the old house, and we brought it over, and I decided just to put it right next to the piano. So we'll go into my fan room here, and there's a big difference in here from last time we did the tour, and that is my rig is up. It's really cool. Now, I don't have a fan installed here, and if I did, I could kind of show you these switches right here. But I had this switch set up at the, I probably showed this when I did the old switches video because it was like, this is, 
me. This it was this is the same switch. He he did it a little differently to work with kind of the way the outlets are positioned in here, and he put the switches up higher. But I don't really mind. Actually, this is kind of more cool in a way because it's easier to kind of reach them. Here's an Intelli touch, and then here's a um, regular switch. But then this just one single switch right here does basically three kind of the same closet LED lights. They're just those cheap ones. There's, yeah, there's just three of them. But there's also another light in the furnace area too that's a, a normal kind of traditional cheap light. And that's controlled on this switch right here. And my cat has also been in here too. This is where my cat has been inhabiting. This is like the first room we sort of put him in and we, he got used to this space right here. So this is sort of the cat area over there. And then here are some boxes of fans I have set up. And there's my toolbox and there's the rig and I can't wait to start testing fans on it. I'm really excited. All right, so as long of a tour as that was, that I believe pretty much wraps it up. There's a closet in here under the stairs but there's no lights and there's just one window in here so it gets kind of dark but honestly surprisingly i thought it would get darker in here back when this house was first being built i was like just one window like that's gonna be pretty dark but it's actually pretty good so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that tour i don't believe i forgot anything here's a here's there's they also have a new tone doorbell ringer in here as well smoke alarm um but yeah i don't believe i forgot anything so that basically sums up the tour and i'll make a little video and obviously i'll do full demonstrations all the fans and i'll also mention it once they finally do install these onyx on the porch i really hope they do that soon but i don't know when and yeah, that pretty much sums up this tour. So I hope you guys all enjoy it. Thanks for watching. And if you want more videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I hope you guys all enjoy. Take care. Okay, I guess this isn't a huge deal, but there is sort of a little something I kind of forgot to mention. I should have mentioned what was in this house right here. I showed the mink air symbol on the porch. But I figured I might get comments asking, like, oh, what's inside the house? You didn't mention that. And the truth is, I don't really know. I've only been in it on the first floor because they were nice enough to let us in back. It was, like, right the day before they started construction on this house. There was, like, a party. They were having a neighborhood party over there. And then we went to visit our house, and we saw them. And we were, I was kind of curious. So I was like, can I look inside? And they let us see the first floor. That was very nice of them. But I can mention to you that I don't know what's on the second floor. They probably have two fans in the bedrooms up there, but I'm not sure what they are yet. I can make an update once I know. Maybe I can ask them at some point. But I did see this room, and they, they had it set up as an office in their house. I think their daughter, who like like is basically doesn't live with them anymore, um, she's like off at college or something. I think she kind of used this as her bathroom at, 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 in their house. Like this served as her bathroom, but they used this room as an office and it just had a bowl light in it. It did not have any ceiling fans. It was just a regular basic cheap bowl light. So I figured I should mention that. And then just like all the other Madisons, obviously they did not have a fan in the living room because this was an extra addition, obviously, that I basically pleaded for because I really felt like the living room should get a ceiling fan. So, um, yeah. But anyways, yeah, I, should, I figured I should just briefly mention that.